Hello, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sport, and in the last Community A4 Skyhawk tutorial, we got fuel from the tanker and are making our way towards the bombing range. But before we do, we need to familiarize ourselves with how to arm and operate the various weapon systems of the scooter. Welcome to an introduction to weapon systems. The A4 Skyhawk is capable of carrying a plethora of munitions, from bomb truck to anti-tank rockets to close air support and even suppression of enemy air defenses. The A4 can carry a payload greater than that of a World War II B-17 flying fortress and fulfill a number of missions. And in order to correctly and effectively employ these munitions, we need to be familiar with the correct switchology on the armament panel and the aircraft weapons release system panel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the armament panel first. In the lower middle portion of the panel, we have our master arm switch. Think of this as the main circuit breaker on your house, which energizes the whole system. You can either left click this to arm or safe, or you could toggle it using the default keybind of zero on your keyboard. It's important to remember that the master arm circuit is broken when the gear is down. Above and to the right, we have the station selector switches, which then energize and tell the aircraft which pylons we want to drop from. These are clickable or can be selected using the 1 through 5 keys on your keyboard. To the left of that, we have our bomb arm switch. You can choose between nose and tail fusing, none, or tail only. Moving down, we have the weapon function selector switch. This is a rotary knob which controls which button on the joystick releases the weapon and how the command to release is sent. This is adjusted by either right or left clicking the direction you want to turn it or by using the 7 and 8 keys. Above and to the left, we have the master gun switch, which can be clicked between ready and safe or by pressing the number 9 key. And finally, to the left of that, we have the emergency jettison selector, which you left and right click to select the stations to be jettisoned when the emergency jettison T handle is pulled. The default key binding for the latter action is control J. All of these knobs and switches allow you to choose which weapon to use and how but we need to take a look at the AWE-1 aircraft weapons release system to determine how many will get used and in what interval. The AWRS panel sits just below the main armament panel. It consists of three rotary knobs and a multiplier index switch. On the left is the AWRS quantity selector knob. This controls how many impulses are sent to the pylons to command a drop, with off being one impulse. Next to that is the drop interval selector. If multiple weapons are to be dropped at once, this will select how much delay in milliseconds between each release of the weapon. The switch next to the drop interval selector increases the selected time by a multiple of 10. Finally, we have our mode selector. This controls the release patterns of the bombs. In the step modes, bombs are released with each press of the bomb release button on the joystick. While in Ripple, the bomb release button is held until the entire program is complete. Within that, you can select the bombs to be released individually in the program, in pairs, or as a salvo. This effectively works as a multiplier box, where impulses are sent to alternating stations in single mode, while the same impulse is sent to two stations simultaneously in pairs mode. The station pairs are 1 with 5 and 2 with 4, with station 3 having no pair assignment and will not drop in pairs mode. It's important to note that both stations must be set to ready for this to function correctly. Salvo mode is similarly used and sends an impulse to all selected stations simultaneously. As for freefall munitions, the A4 can carry the entire range of the Mark 80 and AN series of bombs the latter of which have been uniquely modeled for this mod by the devs. Additionally, we can equip the A4 with the M117 750 pound bombs, 
Mark 77 fire bombs, Mark 20 rock eye cluster bombs, and the BDU-33 training bombs. Many of these can be fitted to triple and multiple ejector racks, depending on the mission needs. To employ, we will first want to set our gun sight depression for our attack profile. Next, we will move down to the AWRS panel, first removing the joystick by clicking on the base or pressing the backspace key by default, selecting the number of bombs we'd like to release, in this case 4, the interval to be released at, 150 milliseconds, and the mode to be released in, which will be a ripple single. We'll also select our desired fusing, and most times I just like to select nose and tail. Next, we'll move our function selector switch to bombs and GM arm, and select the stations we want to drop from. Finally, just before we begin our attack run, we will turn the master arm on, and then at our release point, depress the bomb release button on the joystick. If you've selected a ripple release, it's important to depress and hold the bomb release button until the entire program has been completed. The A4 can also carry multiple different types of unguided rockets, including FFARs, Hydras, and Zunis. To fire these, we will again first select our quantity, interval, and mode in the AWRS. Then select rockets on the weapon function selector switch, followed by the stations you wish to fire from. Select nose and tail fusing on the bomb arm switch, and finally turn the master arm on. In this mode, the rockets will be fired upon squeezing the trigger. Alternatively, you can also select the function selection switch to GM unarm and use the bomb button on the joystick if both guns and rockets are desired on the same pass. The A4 is also equipped with twin internally mounted 20mm Colt Mark 12 cannons with 100 rounds per gun. They are charged and cleared by a nitrogen bottle carried internally and only have a few uses before the bottle runs out, at which time the ground crew must replenish upon rearming. So it's best practice not to arm the guns until you are fully ready to use them and expend them. To arm and use the guns, turn the weapon function selector and the station selection switches to off. Select guns to ready, and you'll hear an audible clunk as the breech block knocks the first round into place. When ready to fire, select the master arm on and squeeze the trigger. For supplemental fire support, up to three monstrous Mark IV 20mm gun pods, capable of firing up to 750 rounds at a staggering 4200 shots per minute, can be mounted to stations 2, 3, and 4. To arm, ensure the weapon selection function switch and station selection switches are off. Select the desired gun pod stations on the left console panel, just ahead of the throttle. Charge the pods on the same panel, master arm on, and let her rip. In addition to all the other weapons we've talked about, the Skyhawk can also carry two different types of guided missiles, the AGM-54 Strike for anti-radiation use, and the Sidewinder Missile for self-defense. These can be carried on stations 1, 2, 4, and 5. 
They are employed and fired the same way, by first selecting bombs and GM arm on the weapon function selector knob, selecting the station you want to fire from, and turning the master arm on. A missile volume knob is located just above the station selection switches. A noticeable change in tone will occur when the seeker detects a valid target. The A4 does not have the ability to uncage the seeker head on these Shrike or Sidewinder missiles, so you must keep the target within a 3 degree cone extending from the weapon's bore sight. Optimal Shrike launch parameters are within 10 nautical miles and above 12,000 AGL of the target. Because the A4 does not have any directional guidance for RWR, you either have to know the general location of your target or use the Shrike in a self-defense manner once you see a SAM launch. To fire both missiles, press the bomb release button on the joystick. There are a few pods and weapons unique to the A4 within DCS. The devs have done a fantastic job including the CBU-1 and 2 cluster bomb units, which consists of the SUU-7 dispenser and a variety of individual anti-personnel bomblets depending on the CBU designation. Carried on pylons 2 and 4 only, the pod consists of 19 tubes, containing between 22 and 32 bombs depending on the tube length and an entire tube is dropped with each impulse received from the AWRS. For the CBU-1, two tubes are dropped per impulse, while for the CBU-2, the number of tubes dropped is configurable within the mission editor, or on the ground through the kneeboard with the engine off and canopy open. To set up a drop, as with the other weapons, we will first set up our AWRS for the number of tubes we'd like to drop, the interval between the impulses, and the mode. Next, we select bombs and GM arm on the function selection knob, turn on stations 2 and 4, and finally, when we are ready to drop, select the master arm on. When over your release point, depress the bomb release button on your joystick and say goodbye to your frame rates. Additionally, we can equip the SUU-25 illumination flare pods, which are quite effective for night operations. Release of these is identical to other bombs by choosing the desired AWRS program, selecting bombs and GM arm on the function selection knob, switching the stations on, and finally energizing the master arm once you're ready to drop. As always, release is triggered by the bomb release button on your joystick. In emergency situations, you can also jettison your stores. This is done by selecting the desired station on the emergency selector knob, including all wing or all pylons, and pulling the emergency bomb T handle to the left of the weapon armament panel. You can also jettison just rocket pods to reduce drag and weight by selecting bombs and GM arm on the function selection knob, turning the desired station switches on, ensuring you're in step single mode on the AWRS, toggling the master arm on, and pressing the bomb release button on your joystick. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the weapon systems on the Community A4 Skyhawk for DCS World. If you're interested in learning more, I've put a link in the description down below to my other tutorials, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.